On today's Try to Finish Something, I've got a build that I'm going to do. Duh, that's why I've got a video. <laughs> I actually said duh. I am going to build the blaster from the Andor series, and I'm going to try and take my time with this, because I've been working on some movie sets, and it's a lot of speed builds and putting out things that I know if I had a little more time, I could make even better. So I'm going to try and slow down, and I'm going to take my time, and I'm going to build this the way that I want. And I honestly have no idea how long... <laughs> I've got a tangent on my tangent about movies. I got another script and another director who wants me to work on a film. It's going to be a horror movie and it's going to be a blast. I'm two tangents in and I haven't even started my build. All right. I'm going to slow down on this build and my idea is to come up with some real world weathering. I haven't done this before and I'm not sure if it's going to work, but the Cassian Andor Blaster has kind of an oiled bronze look and it looks like it's scratched down and well let's just get to it. I've got the Andor blaster that Cassian Andor uses. It's got that little spinning cartridge. All right let's get to it. That's what I'm gonna do on today's Try to Finish Something. I know, this is a view you haven't seen, and I'll get to why in just a minute, but this is a package that I bought from Clever 3D Studios, and I have to admit, I did start to open it first, and then I figured I should wait, and I should do it on camera. And you know it's going to be quality when there is this much care in just the packaging of it. I bought this resin print from Clever 3D Studios on Etsy. It was modeled by Mystery Maker Studios, also on Etsy. I... I love the design of this blaster, and yes, I do have my own resin printer, but I wanted this kind of quality, and it was worth ordering from them. So here's the best reference picture I could find for this blaster. It's a still from the show, and it's pretty dark. And here's an online shot of the MW20, which is the model of blaster that he carries. The coloring is a bit lighter here than on his, and I think I'm going to try and go with his show version of the coloring. The blaster almost has, I don't know, an oiled brass look. It's not quite black, it has a brownish tone, and the under color seems to be tan with a copper or goldish highlight. Oh, and why aren't I in my build room? Well, my 10-year-old daughter's chickens were attacked by coyotes, and she was devastated. So we have the chicks in my build room right now because of all of the bad weather we've been having in California with the rain, they were forced to go inside. And all of that wind and rain has also been blowing over trees into our fences. And I have been doing a ton of fence repair and having to fix electric wire all over the place. So the silver lining to all of this fence work is I now have spools of fresh wire to make spray painting hangers. Everything is prepped and it's time for some spray paint. I'm doing a gray primer first, just dusting on layers. I will do three layers of gray, then switch to this warm caramel, black and dark brown walnut, three layers of each. All right, I can't take it. I am moving back into my build room. I can't take the lack of space to work. I'm just going to move the chicks into another room, and then I'll move them back in here as soon as I'm done with this project. So here is everything painted. Only this one piece needed to be masked for two colors. And I love a good unmasking. When you've taken your time to make sure that there is no bleed through, it is so satisfying. Now, to my real-world weather. I will do painting as well, but my idea is to use some 80-grit, really rough sandpaper, a wire brush, steel wool, and other items just laying around to scratch off strategic layers of paint, focusing on the high spots and where it looks like it would get banged around, then to smooth out the transitions and dull the shine of that flat black in some spots, I will try mineral spirits and buff out some of the paint and scratches as well as some spots rubbing down all the way to the next layer of paint. This model by Marco of Mystery Makers has a ton of great detail and this will help bring it out. By the way, a link to his shop and Clever 3D Studio down in the description. 
So this is just half of that chamber that spins in the middle. And I was doing some reading about the blaster. And the idea is it loads around into the top of the cylinder. And when that charge is fired, it's so hot it spins around to get the next charge on top, allowing the just fired chamber to cool. And because of that spinning motion, I'm trying to keep the wear consistent with that spinning movement. And yes, I keep looking at the Andor Show reference picture and just slowly exposing layers of paint. Now in the show, the safety here was worn and I want the path the switch travels to be scratched like it was being switched on and off. Just slowly, methodically sanding on the high spots and working my way through all of these dark pieces. And yes, I can hear what you're thinking. Um, Sean, those handle grips are really too light. I, I thought you weren't going for the digitally drawn reference picture of the blaster and you were using the show picture as reference. I, I am. <laughs> and I, I didn't mean you sounded like that. That's just how you sound or how I sound in my head as I'm looking at him. But even in that dark photo, it's obviously a wood grip darkened by grime, wear, and time. And I'm going to use the same wood technique I did on my Boba Blaster link up there. A technique I learned from Wesley Treat. Again, I watch a lot of YouTube and Wesley is a sign maker and I don't make signs, but I find the process fascinating and I picked up a tip that I've changed just a little bit to meet my own nerdy needs. So here's what you're going to do. Your base layer. You're going to go with the lightest color of your wood grain and paint it the entire thing that color first. Then using a dark wood stain in my case, I'm going to use a fan brush. A chip brush would work too. Anything with rough, disorganized bristles that are spread out. You just get a tiny bit of stain on it and then you brush on the direction of your wood grain. You're not covering the whole piece. It's almost like you're dry brushing. Just make sure you keep the path of the grain. Now, the parts that I've added to his technique is using a very small brush, I create some knots in the wood and I paint with stain the way that the grain flows around those knots. <laughs> I've studied a lot of knots trying to perfect this technique. And yes, I am going to weather over the top of all of this, and most of this will never, ever be seen. But we, you and I, will know it's there. <laughs> I'm just obsessively painting on additional grain and doing it for both wooden grips and the top of the wooden piece of this blaster. And if all of that wasn't obsessive enough, the next obsessive thing I will do is using brown and black water-based oil paints, I will add some color variation to parts of the grain and parts of the knot so that the look of the wood will hold up to super close scrutiny. And remember, most of this will never ever be seen once this has been weathered. Now, I think when this is all said and done, I spent an hour just painting the wood grain. This was molded to be able to hold electronics to make it automatically spin when you press the trigger. And it has a lot of channels for wires to run through. But what I'm going to do is use one of those wire channels to run a really long nail through to give it a stronger connection between the grip and the whole barrel assembly of this blaster. Now, the trigger is made so that it has a place to add that switch to make that chamber spin. But what I'm doing is I'm making the holes a little bit bigger to hold some springs because I want to be able to press that trigger and have it pop back up again like it's ready to fire.
Just adding the springs where the button would go, slide the trigger in, and then force this piece into the... So, force this... All right, not quite. A little more sanding to make my idea work so that it fits. And... Force it in. Nope, so close. All right, once this gets in, it's never coming out. success. I have a working trigger and I I feel like a 12-year-old. That's really cool. All right. Time to get to some gluing. Scratching up the mounting surfaces to give a place for the glue to go and create a stronger bond. All of that texture will help the glue keep them together. And I want the whole surface to have glue and I hate squeeze out. So what I'll sometimes do is put the glue on and then dab it with a paper towel around the entire area to make sure it's all covered. Should have thought ahead and had a clamp ready, but I guess I'm just going to hold it. All right, this time I grabbed some clamps so I don't have to spend all day holding things. Now let's glue up the firing chamber glue and paper towels again to spread it around and this time I'm gonna clamp it. This end piece should have been painted on the back side so I'm going to spray paint that and work on the grips while that dries. It will get glued and screwed in place and the same for the grip on the other side. The end cap is dry and it's time to attach that. When this is all assembled, it will get another round of weathering. I've been watching a lot of spy or assassin movies and TV shows lately and it's making me really like the feel of that Andor series even more. And I'm thinking of doing some sort of spy or assassin type kit for an upcoming build. My last non-Star Wars build, the Wednesday Addams build, didn't go over very well on YouTube and no one really watched it. I probably should have learned my lesson and not do things that are non-Star Wars, but I'm not that smart and I might do that spy kit anyway. Did you see I just super glued that bit of paper towel to my finger? Like I said, not that smart. Last thing is to glue on this little silver piece here and the home stretch weathering time. I'm adding some powder pigment for dust and dirt, and some brown and black water-based oils. I'm going heavy on the grooves and edges and then wiping some of the high spots to let that silver shine through as it would really wear in real life. And all of this wood will get the same treatment and the whole blaster too. On the grips, I'm going very heavy on the edges and grooves trying to darken up the handle closer to match the reference. I also realize that some of the darkness in that picture is the lighting. Apply and wipe, apply and wipe. Now, the last touch before I spray this with a clear matte spray is I want to add some of those copperish gold highlights. I have this aged gold rub and buff and eh, that should do the trick. I'm applying it very sparingly. I'm just dry brushing it to a few edges and scratches. And then after that dries, I will knock parts of it back down with a bit more of the water-based oil black to make sure that there are just some variations in color. Now I'm just darkening up some of the antique gold. And I've got a cool wall panel that I got from Props and Villainy. And in the reference photo, the blaster is in a case with money. And I have this blue case that opens up. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some double stick tape and attach that wall panel to this case and shoot a teaser video for this video. <laughs> I realize that I will have already released it by the time you see this, but I'll put it at the end of this video in case you haven't seen it. Now I'm just adding a metal ring to the bottom of this and I'm calling my new weapon, the Cassian Andor Series Blaster, to add to my weapons lockup for my Star Wars bunker room, 
finished. I really hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe to my channel and consider joining my Patreon group or grabbing something from my Amazon wish list pinned to the comments and in the description. If you didn't, as always, just keep it to yourself, and we'll see you next time as we try to finish something. Make sure to stick around for the glam shots and that teaser video of me being a giant nerd. And a huge shout out to Props and Villainy for the wall panel creation. Thanks for watching, everybody.